What's going on guys? So today we are going to be talking to you about how to properly track macros. I noticed on YouTube a lot of people talk about macro friendly foods and stuff like that but don't actually show you how to do it. So this is what we're going to do. Please smash that like button before we get into it as it helps our channel a lot. Let's jump into it. So the most common question we get guys is we use MyFitnessPal. I don't even really know what other apps are out there, but MyFitnessPal has been pretty solid. It is a bit glitchy, but that's the one we use. So for me personally, about five or so years ago when I tried to track my macros, I actually struggled a lot getting past breakfast because I'd usually track my cereal and stuff, which is super easy. But once I go into like foods that I'm going out to eat and stuff like that, I just found it hard to actually find it in the system, um, how to like properly track it, like with the serving size and stuff like that. So that's what we're gonna show you in this video. Stay to the very end as we give you a lot of tips about how to track when going out when it's not actually on the app. So the number one tip guys is you can literally just take something and there's a barcode on it. Like you literally take your phone, open the app and we'll have something on the screen right here showing you how to do it and just scan it. And then with that being said, it just pops up, you put in the serving size and that's honestly the most efficient way to track your macros. Number 1.5 guys, before I even dive into this even further than we already have, is it really doesn't take that long. Anyone who says, oh, I have a full-time job, I do this, I do this, I don't have time to track my macros. Who are you kidding, we're on to you. It takes, maybe when you start out, it'll take 10 minutes of your day. When you get good at it, it'll take you three minutes. Just pop, pop, pop before I eat something, you type it in, it'll save your frequent foods, it'll save your recent foods. This video isn't endorsed by MyFitnessPal, in fact, I have a love-hate relationship because mine is so slow and freezes up like crazy, but it does the job. It's really convenient and it's really helped me with my goals and if you guys aren't on it, it's so worth it. No matter what your goals are, just jump into it. It doesn't take that long. Make it a habit. Do it for 30 days and you won't think about it and you'll be on 600 day streaks like us. What? Not every food has a barcode? Yeah, God, I know. Sorry, that was college being stupid. So, uh, yeah, obviously you just can't scan a banana. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. Unless you're looking for some weird barcode that doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> it's got so cringy so quick. Uh. No, but usually you can just type one banana and there'll be small, medium, large. If you're not competing, I, I say that's a fair scale. Eyeball things, try to be reasonable. You don't have to bring your food scale to the restaurant and weigh everything. If you want to take it up a notch, weigh it. But the easiest way is just eyeball something, learn serving sizes. It will start by maybe weighing using cups as measuring and measuring tools and such. And then you'll be really good at identifying portions and identifying how to use portion control. And even past logging, the one benefit is you learn what's in the food, like what's the makeup. So for this much mashed potatoes, that it's primarily carbs, uh, depending on how much butter is used, if it's more fat, and in time it'll really pay off. Number three is your food diary can get messy. You can do it on your phone, on your computer, wherever. Don't stress too much about putting something in breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack. Some people eat seven meals, some people eat eight. Put it wherever you want to, just make sure it's all in there. And I can't stress enough, log it before you eat it, because it's easier to log something before you eat it than after and trying to remember at the end of the day. Don't leave it for the end of the day. Take the phone, say, sorry guys, I'm just gonna track my food quickly. Two minutes, boom, bada, bang, you're good to go. And then it'll become very easy and painless, especially as you get those recent foods, because you're gonna be logging and eating a lot of the same foods. And that's pretty much as easy as it gets for home. This is where you're in control. You know what's being made. You know how it's done. Uh, you know how to input everything now, how to use it. When you create the account, it walks you through everything. We're not going to do that because that's what they program to do. But a lot of people have this question, and we really hope this helps with those common objections. Now we're going to dive into where it gets difficult when you're eating out at a friend's house, at a wedding, at a restaurant, and what to do then. So number one when eating out guys, there are a lot of chain restaurants. For example, we're at Nando's right now, we always eat here. Um, and I just had the chicken pita with fries. So it's very simple to just like literally type it in online and it'll just come up and it's as simple as that. I'll put my fries, my sweet potatoes, and my pita right there and put it and it will give you the total calorie intake. And all these restaurants nowadays are actually obligated to put the calories and the nutritional facts online. So they make it very simple for you. And what gets difficult is when you're at an actual place that doesn't provide legit stats for you. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. Try to make this video as exhaustive and as 
as simple as possible with comments by online are so online you can find a total like menu and stats for all the foods at restaurants a lot of time people go ahead and people and or the restaurant will input that into my fitness pal so if I search Nando's Chicken Pita, a little verified version will come up alongside with other ones that people have created. You can create your own foods, you can make your recipes, put them in there as a meal. It makes the process super simple. But now obviously, like Kyle said, it gets difficult if you're at Uncle Joe's local dinery and you're eating mashed potatoes there and chicken wings. So here, this is where you gotta, there's two options. If you're really serious and you're competing, might be best not to go there. This is where it gets a little intense and this is only if you're deep in a cut or competing. But the best answer for this is if I have 10 chicken wings, search 10 chicken wings, find one that looks about right, that's reasonable in calories, kind of look through, compare the size of them to normal chicken wings. A lot of times they're very similar in stature. So you just search that, you pop in the 10. Then for the mashed potatoes, you can taste how much butter's in there and you, once again, you can work off scale based off what other people have and you have to guesstimate to the best of your ability. At the end of the day, that's the best you can do. It's better to guesstimate and be slightly in error than completely just say screw it, wing it, and hope for the best. So you want to be in as control as you can, but you'll never be perfect. Don't let it turn into a thing where it's very OCD for you, where you're freaking out all the time if you're 100% correct. Because even a lot of these food scales, there's some degree of error, and usually it's found that even someone who's logged as accurate as they can will be about 10% off. But like I said, 10% error is better than 100% error where you're not tracking anything. And kind of as like a, an overview of all of this, whenever you're eating out or whenever you're eating at home, I highly recommend trying to log each individual ingredient separately to get the best results. So for example, like Josh's ham sub from Subway isn't gonna be the same as your ham sub um, because there's so many different things that come into play such as the vegetables you put on it, um, the sauces and everything like that. So if you're like trying to actually legit be as accurate as possible, I highly recommend do, doing this um, and you will see the best results. Hit you with some quick bonus tips here. Okay, a couple things. Number one, if you cheat my fitness pal, you're only cheating yourself. No one else is losing by you lying about portions by you. If you've gone over, you have to log it, let yourself see it, and you can see where you've gone wrong. This is a huge thing. A lot of people like to just lie and get their numbers right, but you're doing nothing by doing that. Put it in, do it right. Two sauces add up real quick, guys. You'd be amazed how much fat is in like one little pizza garlic, creamy garlic dip. It's like 30 grams of fat, guys. It's crazy. Be careful with the sauce, make sure you're logging the sauce. A lot of people just like say, oh, it's only a bit of sauce. You'd be amazed, sauce adds the heck up. And then lastly, uh, just have fun with it, get better with it. Uh, there's good forms on MyFitnessPal even, and there's great mechanisms to learn through there how to be better at tracking. Make it part of your life and your results will increase so much. Logging is better than any supplement, anything you can do in my opinion, it really helps. If you guys really want to take logging to the next level and your goals in fitness and you want someone to help you with setting macros, understanding macronutrient makeup better, check us out, look into our online coaching service. We've helped hundreds and hundreds of people get to where they want to go through macronutrient coaching, training regimens and everything like that. If you guys are interested, fill out our form down below. We'll get in contact with you and we'll see if we're a great fit to get this journey started. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, hit us with a thumbs up if you haven't already. Drop a comment down below. See you in the next video. Peace.